So boxing out of the red corner is Dmitry Kavali of Russia. Tournament number 16, 14th ranked boxer in the world, preparing for his fourth bout at Tashkent 2023. 22 years of age, he's a man from the Moscow, the Moscow region. So for the first time in this 20th session of boxing, here at the semi-final stage, you see a home boxer. That is why the fans are up on their feet and waving a beautiful Uzbekistan flag approaching the boxing ring. It's Oybek Jodayev, 24 years of age from right here in Tashkent. About 419 here at your IBM Men's World Boxing Championship semi-finals. This bout is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in a men's elite bantamweight division. And your winner will be your finalist in the men's bantamweight championship finals. Your five judges being represented here tonight ringside from Turkey, Afghanistan, Estonia, Australia, and India. And with the action begins, your referee in the center of the ring by the bell, representing the IBA. By way of Algeria, with referee Sid Ali Mokhtari. So Sidali Mokratari is our referee. And we are underway. 54 kilogram bantamweight action to see who will be going through to the gold medal bout where Mahmoud Sabri Khan, the tournament number two seed awaits. This one between boxers from Russia and Uzbekistan. The man wearing red is Dmitry Dvali. 22 years of age from Moscow, the South Pole wearing blue is Oybek Kudayev. Both men competing in their fourth bout of Tashkent 2023. So the southpaw scoring effectively with both lead southpaw right and the backhand which he landed to both head and body and he is up on his toes is Jodayev using every inch of the boxing ring back positively skimming the ropes nice jab landed by Diwali but the busier boxer is the man wearing blue looking to maintain a significant gap between himself and the Bobbing, weaving figure who's switching between orthodox and southpaw. Now he's back in the orthodox stance. There's a good stiff backhand out of the orthodox stance. Landed by Diwali. He's switching his feet when he's coming forwards. But thus far, approaching the halfway stage of this opening round, Jiraev demonstrating the motion of a jackrabbit. He hasn't stopped moving, darting laterally both left and right and looking to maintain a clear gap between himself and his Russian opponents. Just beyond the midpoint of this first round. Three shot combination, double jab left uppercut attempted by Jereyev, but four three shots blocked by the gloves and forearms of the valley. Looking for the left uppercut to the solar plexus on the resumption with the valley, but couldn't quite find the range. Intent to back off box off the ropes momentarily not using as much of the ring he's staying just on the edge of ring center here for this portion of the round now he's back to the using the full expanse of the road to arena tagged by a single from Diwali on the resumption he sneaks a one two in between the high hug gloves of his opponent from Russia Using angles effectively too is Jureyev. 
Cavalli tried to tie him up while he was tagged with a southpaw left and then a one-two. Shots coming underneath and around the corner in what has been around a high activity from Oybak Jureyev. Hasn't stopped moving. Either his hands or his feet, something always on the go from Oybek Jureyev. What an opening round. And that is why he's raised his glove to the rafters here at the Humo Arena. Because that was a blistering round indeed. Diwali had his moments, but I don't think he's done enough to take any of it. We said the funky drum is working overtime, as is the Uzbek coach. Because he really does work that drenched towel to cool down his fighters as we take a look at some of the action from the opening round. So Diwali up off his stall early to begin round number two. opening round we haven't yet been treated to the scores live scoring is available but not able to bring it to you at the conclusion of the first three minutes my impression was that the man in blue way back Jereyev Jereyev did enough to win the round and look at the man which is able to box when seemingly pinned against the ropes comes to the ring from the professional ranks started his professional career in 2022 had two contests during that calendar year winning both right here in Tashkent, but has returned to the unpaid code. Silver medalist in the national championships in the most recent edition, took the national title in 2019 and won the Box Sky Multinations tournament earlier this year. And he's acquitting himself very well indeed during the course of the second round. Just reddening around his right eye. There's a stiff single that will keep Jodayev honest. Comes back looking for right jab, left uppercut. And it's interesting. Will Jodayev be able to keep up this movement for the entirety of the three three-minute rounds? Heads come together forcefully. B bustling away to the body. Here's Diwali. Remember, there was a portion in the opening round where Jeraev was able to stay on the edge of center ring. There he's backed up by a stiff right hand once again. Because he's expended an awful lot of energy in the first three minutes. But look at how he stepped back into the pocket and launched a lead right left uppercut out of that southpaw stance. Just looking to manage the clock here and tie his man up. All of his experience from both codes of boxing, i.e. IBA boxing and the professional ranks being brought to bear. Burst of activity to impress the judges. Looking to keep his man at bay, spinning off the line as he fired a right hook. Good work to the body from Jodayev. Diwali continuing his task of looking to score on the inside. We've got a cut to the forehead of Diwali. At least I think it's his blood that is evident on his forehead just beneath his hairline on the left side and again not able to bring you the scores at the conclusion of the first round my impression was that Jereyev did enough to take it but Diwali really looking to close the gap and if Jereyev is slowing down while well, he's looking to be right practically inside his singlet and be there with his heavy leather of his own nice left uppercut Turned underneath, followed by a right hook from Jaraya. Beautiful check left hook landed by Diwali. And then a hard body shot slammed in just above the belt line from Diwali. And that is one surefire way to slow down the movement of a fleet-footed operator. Test him downstairs. Second round in the books. And look at the contrast in how the two men walk to their respective corners. Diwali in red positively sprinted back because he had greater success in that opening, in that second round compared to the first. And that is because Jurayev, after non-stop movements for the opening round, was a little less fleet-footed in the second round. Make no mistake, he still produced some quality punch picking. So there's the scorecard then. It was a clean sweep of the cards in the first round. Excuse me, a 4-1 
split of the cards, the judge number four favoring the work of the volley. But in the second round, what a turnaround. But the volley has taken it for judges five and two. And this contest in the balance as we go into the third and final round. Three scorecards of 19 points apiece. Jedayev leading by 20 points to 18 for judges one and three. So this one has all come down to the final three minutes. The second semi-final in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division to determine who will go through to the gold medal bout to face off against Mahmoud Sabir Khan of Kazakhstan, the tournament number one seed. And look at that, so keen are the boxers to re-enter the fray that they're not necessarily heeding the instruction of break from our referee. So this is really going to test the resolve of both boxers, particularly Jadayev, because he gave me the impression that he was slowing down slightly in that second round, but he's come out briskly in this third and final frame having conceded the second round to give us this scoreline of 19 points apiece for judges two, four and five. Left uppercut slung in with bad intentions from Jurayev. Both men just leaning on to gain themselves a breather. A minute gone in this final round. In a bout such as this, which is being punctuated by increasingly untidy tangles, a moment of quality could well be decisive. Jodayev, I feel, has done a good job of not just being a back foot boxer, but look at the manner in which he's looking to initiate the clinch here. And referee on that immediately. He won't want to pick up a warning, which could well be decisive. Now, referee has called time, and that is because the boot lace on the right shoe of Jariah requires some attention. Now this is experience from the coach because he's tending to the glove, all of which just gives his man a little more time to recover. Of course, it's the same for the man boxing out of the red corner, but he looks a little fresher, does the Russian boxer, than Jariah. Left uppercut turned underneath by Jariah. Continuing his front foot advance and scoring effectively with his lead left hand. Here's the Bali. Jadayev increasing the distance and he's used that southpaw left uppercut to terrific effect. There he's picked off by a left jab and then a cluster of punches underneath from the Bali. There he scores with a good left hand to the body. Terrific exchange in the space of centre ring before the boxers tumble into the strands. Terrific determination being demonstrated by both and on the resumption once again, it's a left uppercut shoveled into the body this time from Jariah. So terrific action, not necessarily a great deal of accuracy, but there there was accuracy from both boxers, particularly the left hand from the volley, who again, his feet are crossing over sometimes during his forward forays. Now he's wholly operating out of the southpaw stance, but a good portion of the round, aggressive intent being shown by Jodayev. And again, that is something which can impress the judges. The 10 second clapper has sounded. Both men looking to free their hands and work away. Jodayev just content to fashion a clinch in the closing seconds. Both men giving absolutely everything during that pulsating contest. Remember, it was 19 points apiece for judges two, four, and five after three completed rounds. So who did enough in that final round? Now, we're going to an evaluation. Observers and evaluators reviewing the bout, that means that this contest concluded 3-2. Any scorecard returned at 3-2 or 2-3 is subject to an evaluation by the observer and the evaluator. So, which way would the observer and evaluator have scored this one? It's been returned 3-2 for somebody. It's not yet official because it hasn't been announced. The announcement will incorporate the scores of the evaluator and the observer. 
nervous moments for both of the boxers. And it's Jiraev, Oybek Jiraev, a winner on points after a bout review and he is thanking the boxing gods because that was a hard fought affair indeed. The Uzbekistan flag flying proudly here at the Omo Arena because the host nation have their first finalist. A gutsy display produced by Oybek Jiraev and we have to give immense credit to the part that Dmitry Diwali of Russia played in this semi-final. He gave absolutely everything to the tournament number six seed, but his tournament comes to an end here at the semi-final stage. He goes away with championship bronze. We'll see this man again in the gold medal bout. That ear injury is going to have to be patched up by the Uzbek medical staff. So he's gonna to have to rest, recover, rehydrate, make weight, and then do it all again. But make no mistake, this is what he's dedicated his life to. Oybek Jiraev will go through to contest world championship gold after prevailing, after a bout review on points over the determined Dmitry Diwali of Russia. Terrific contest.